Hi there, uh, my name's Ryan Heenan. I'm an actor, uh, working predominantly in theatre, and uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself and uh, things I've learned along the way, and maybe some advice for, for you guys going forward in the world of theatre. So I got into theatre probably, like most people do, uh, by my local amateur group. I grew up in Brussels, which is um, has got quite a big English-speaking community, but the English-speaking community that does amateur theatre is quite small, so it was very tight-knit, and I, my, I think my mum took me to see a show that they did, and I saw kids in it, and I must have been about six years old, and I said, um, whatever show they do next, if there's kids in it, can I be in it as well? And uh, that one thing led to another, and I did a lot of shows with them, and when I was about 12, I did a summer school at a theatre school in London, and uh, off the back of that, they offered me a scholarship and the opportunity to train at that school, um, which seemed mad at the time, I think. So my parents sent me to school in London, uh, but they were very supportive and were able to make it work, uh, for which I'm very grateful. So I went to um, theatre school in London and got some experience. And uh, once I finished my schooling and got my A-levels, I applied to drama school and was very lucky to get into Central. Uh, which is a drama school based in Swiss Cottage in London. Um, I had a fantastic time there and uh, to really develop my skills in a more adult way than I'd done before. Um, and it really pushed me and gave me a really good support network of um, friends who are still my closest friends today. And uh, I graduated there about four years ago. Um, and through, through the process of Central, we had a few uh, showcases in our final year, uh, whereby um, agents and casting directors from the industry came to watch our shows. And uh, I got an agent out of a showcase, and I've been working for the last four years um, ever since, really. Um, working in the theatre industry uh, can be very, very challenging. Uh, there's always obstacles to overcome. Um, on a very basic level, it's challenging because you're not constantly employed um, and it's not predictable your employment. So it's very rare that you'll have a contract that even lasts a year, a year, a year long. So we're constantly auditioning, constantly trying to find the next job. And uh, that can throw up certain challenges in your personal life as well. For example, if you've got friends who say invite you to their wedding or um, they're booking a holiday and they want you to come along. I, I can't always say I'm definitely going to be available because I don't know that for, for a fact. Um, and you kind of live month to month um, in a very unpredictable way. I actually tend to enjoy the unpredictability of it. I find it keeps, keeps things very, very interesting for me and um, keeps me on my toes. Um, other challenges uh, include just basic skills. So in my first job out of drama school, um, I was cast in the show and uh, I received a script. I was cast based on my singing and acting and I received a script and I found that my character played the musical saw. I don't play the musical saw, I still don't play the musical saw, but I did learn a little bit for this show and they uh, very kindly presented me with um, a saw. So for the, you, those of you who don't know, it's not a regular saw, they are genuine, genuine instruments and they're saws that sort of bend, you have to bend them into an S shape and bow with a violin bow. They make a, an interesting noise. Google it. So sometimes you get challenges like that. You have to pick up a new skill within a matter of weeks. So all sorts of challenges, both uh, professionally and personally. I tend to get very, very attached to, to most roles I play. Um, and I'm yet to have a negative experience on a job, to be honest. Uh, I suppose one of my favourite jobs I did was uh, Billionaire Boy at the Nuffield Theatre in Southampton that we ended up touring around the country as well. Um, it was really special for a number of reasons. Um, a, because it's a David w based on David Wellings book, so it was very, very silly and funny, and um, we were creating the show from scratch. So although the, the novel had been written, uh, we were in the room working with the composers and uh, the scriptwriter and the arrangers and, and, and the choreographer and the director, and, and we weren't recreating a show. Often when you do musicals especially, uh, they're set so there's no flexibility for, for putting your own stamp on things. You have to do it uh, the way the original creative team uh, envisaged it. But um, with new work and new musicals, 
you are as much part of the creative process as any member of the creative team. So I remember day to day, even when we, we started um, to open the show before our press night, uh, lyrics were, were, were being changed and you're rehearsing them during the day and implementing them that night. Or um, in rehearsals, if a, if a scene doesn't, you know, sounds great on paper, but but when you get up to do it with the other actor, it doesn't flow very naturally or doesn't suit the two people they've cast. That's all open to change and, and to discussion. And uh, the extra fun we had on Billion Airboy was that uh, the cast were actor musicians which means we didn't have a sort of conventional divide between actors and band. Uh, the actors on stage were part of the band. So uh, when we were devising the music, we had, uh, and devising the staging, we were going, okay, so when we get to this song, so-and-so needs to enter and play the guitar, which then affects how we get into the next scene because they're playing a different character. So they need to, play the guitar but then have enough time to change their costume and, and you get all sorts of obstacles like that um, and it was gen, gen, genuinely one of my favourite times because it was a really great group of people and everyone just um, dug down deep and got involved um, so I loved it. In terms of future plans um, I have to be honest I don't, I don't currently have any. Uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus COVID-19 I'm sure you've heard plenty about it has really affected the theatre industry and uh, all theatres have, have closed and uh, all work that people had in the pipeline, uh, gigs, uh, plays, musicals, uh, have all been postponed unless they are significantly later in the year. Uh, however, there's plenty of proactive things I've been doing. I've been working on um, showreel material and voice reel material, which is uh, filmed um, film media or recorded media that you can send off to voice companies or casting directors uh, as a sort of digital way of um, auditioning. Uh, so I've been able to crack on with a bit of that and hopefully I'll be back in the audition room as soon as all of this is over. One of the most important lessons I've learned uh, from working in theatre is the value of being kind and generous to everyone you meet. And I don't mean in, a, um, in any kind of pretentious way, I, I really genuinely mean um, going out of your way to support people or um, going the extra mile in rehearsals, or you know, staying late to, to run lines with someone, or um, making an effort to, to learn your music so that uh, you're not being chased by the musical director uh, to do so. Just small, small things, but significant things. Um, what I've found is every um, job I've gone to, uh, there's been a connection to someone I've worked with previously, either at drama school or um, since I've been working professionally. And that's because it's a very, very small bubble of people that, that, that make theatre. And so when I go to audition for, for a new project, uh, even if I don't know any of the creative team, they'll most certainly know someone on my CV that I've worked with. Uh, and they'll be able to phone them up and say, look, what's Ryan like to, to work with? And they're only gonna hire me if, if they get good feedback. So it's in everyone's interest in the industry to, to, to be professional, to be kind and to be generous. Um, and uh, also it's, it's a tough industry and not all of us are working all of the time. And uh, supporting each other through that is uh, the only way to, to go about it really. So sense of community and being kind is the, is the main lessons I've learned. Finally, uh, if you're thinking of going into the theatre industry yourself, uh, not necessarily as an actor, as any kind of theatre maker, I would say uh, watch as much theatre as you can. And beating that in these times, uh, there's loads of digital theatre out there. So there's broadwayhd.com, uh, digitaltheatre.com, I believe. I think you can get free trials on, on most of them, so you don't actually have to pay. Just delete it before your free trial's over. And you can watch lots of theatre online. Um, replays, uh, f f order them, borrow them, uh, share them, but read lots of plays and you don't have to like them. Uh, talk about, find someone else that's read it, talk about what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Uh, watch great films, talk about why you think certain actors are better than others or what you like about their choices, why you think they've made certain choices. Um, so yeah, the more the more access you give yourself to, to different points of views um, and different ways to make things, 
the more awareness you'll have when when working out how you're going to do it for yourself um so that would be my advice and then finally my my main advice is say yes to every single opportunity always say yes uh even if you think it's not really the musical i want to do right now or i don't think that plays really for me unless you've got a really good reason not to do it um you'll learn something from the experience and you'll be able to take something away from it so yeah uh Thank you so much for, for listening to my video. I hope I haven't rambled too much. And I hope that some of what I've spoken about helps. Uh, all the very best.